Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this beautiful, sunny Southern California morning. Uh, I'm going to start a series of videos on this channel um, addressing pools, pool ownership, pool maintenance, all the stuff you need to maintain a pool, and uh, what's involved. A lot of you are probably um, new to pools if you're on this video, and uh, some of you may have been inherit it may have inherited a pool by uh buying a new house or maybe you just built one or perhaps you're renting and you have to maintain the pool where you are um if you're fortunate you probably have somebody uh coming and maintaining your pool once a week but uh a lot of you are probably also considering um doing that work yourself which is not entirely too difficult if you just have a few very basic tools, uh, which I'm going to cover in coming up videos. So today I just wanted to kind of uh, tease that set of upcoming videos uh, for you and then also do a bit of kind of pool anatomy. Um, uh, what are the different parts of the pool? And, um, you know, if you're just brand new to the pool and maintaining one or, you know, having any exposure to one um, as an adult, um, this might help you out. So, uh, the, you know, the, the part of the pool we're all very familiar with is what you see, uh, the part with the water in it. But uh, there's there's uh, quite a few different pieces to a pool, including um, valves and plumbing and um, the equipment and different uh, pieces of the pool and whatnot. So we'll, we'll kind of talk about some of those things um, in uh, this video and in some upcoming videos. So today, I uh, just wanted to talk about this pool real quick. Um, this is a very relatively new pool for us. Um, it actually replaced an old pool, uh, which was exactly the same shape, uh, the outline, but we changed everything else about it. So we put in this area here which is referred to as a Baja shelf. Uh, so this is an area kind of for lounging and for kids to play and whatnot. It also, as you can see, you might be able to see this. You'll see these, uh, that plastic cap there and another plastic cap there. And those are intended for um, umbrellas to be inserted in. You only really need one of them at any given time. And I use either one or the other one. Um, so as I said, this pool just got completed and I kind of got a very good education as to um, all the different pieces and parts that go into building a pool. Um, and I wanted to share some of that with you. And then uh, I also kind of try to do most of the maintenance in this pool myself. So I thought I would share some of those um, tips and tricks that I've learned over the years uh, with you. So we talked about the Baja shelf there. Obviously, you know about your tile and a lot of the time, and you'll hear somebody talk about your water line. Your water line should be, uh, you know, that is where your water kind of ends, um, the top of the water. And that water line should be um, exactly halfway in your tile line. So uh, the tile here, we've got six, um, six tiles, essentially, that are six tiles wide or tall. And uh, that third line is usually where we're aiming to have the water. So it may be a little bit above that or a little bit below that, you, you'll be okay. And um, this area here, it's called the coping. So that um, whatever uh, you choose to have your coping made out of, this is a precast concrete. You could have a poured in place concrete um, coping. You could have brick or um, any sort of material that you know people use essentially. And uh, obviously that is the spa over there, sometimes referred to as a jacuzzi or, or whatever, um, that has the bench in it and it has the jets that you see. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, so then, uh, so how does a pool function really, right? So you fill it up with water, but pool is kind of a, um, it's one of those things that if you just leave it without any maintenance or any equipment, it will 
rot on you. So what will happen is, especially as the weather gets warm, you'll start forming algae inside the pool if your chemical balance in the pool isn't correct and if you're not filtering things well. So the way you filter things is so if you walk around your pool, you will notice an opening just like that one right there. Let's see, Wait, do I have it in the camera now? Sorry, there it is. <laughs> kind of hard with the light to actually see. So just like that one right there. And what that is, is called a skimmer. So that is skimming the very top of your pool surface. So um, your pump, is essentially pulling water from this area. And this is the, the skimmer lid, it's the basket. And as you can see, the water is flowing in here pretty rapidly and is skimming off the top. The other piece of the skimmer that most people think is insignificant, but I actually think is one of the most significant parts of your pool is that piece of plastic there. second actually demonstrated a problem just right there all right see a little flap in here that moves up and down okay that's called a weir now a lot of people think this is an insignificant piece of equipment a lot of people think that that is in, including some pool guys I've dealt with. Um, a lot of people think that that is uh, just to keep the leaves in here when the pump shuts off. That's one of the functions. So like all the all the grime that goes over the surface and ends up in here, it doesn't go to the pump, right? It stays inside that basket. But once that um, once the motor shuts off, once the pump shuts off, that flow of the water stops so everything you've just collected would go back into the pool so one of the functions of that thing is that it it then it's just a piece of foam inside essentially and so it's buoyant and it's uh it pivots along an axis inside there so that it moves up and down with water like the buoyancy force but it's just buoyant enough that like its density is just enough that when the pump is on, it does get pulled down and allow the water to go right over the top of it. And that's actually what's really important. I wish I could give you a better view of it. There we go. Um, so as you can see, the water just goes right over the top of that as it comes into the pool. So one of the functions, as we said, is to keep the leaves from going back out or the bugs or whatever it is from going back up. But the other function, which I actually think is the most important function, and a lot of people miss this fact, is that that is what makes the very surface of your pool clean. That is, that is helping you skim the very surface. If that didn't exist, you would just be pulling in like that entire four or five inches of water right there into the pump. That is not what it does. It allows you to just pull the very surface of the water in that, that allows you to keep the water surface clean. And as you notice, mine was a little stuck. And that we'll, I'll talk about that in a future video about how to, how to make sure that doesn't happen. And even if you make sure, it still will happen to you once in a while. Um, there has just not been enough innovation in that, in the, in the creation of that, um, uh, that weird part, in my opinion, but we'll, we'll talk about that. There's ways you can trim and fit it pro properly. And, and the problem you have is if somebody mucks with it, uh, then you have to reseed it. So we'll talk about that. And that's exactly what's happened here. Um, so I've, and this is the cover and I've basically, since I've I had artificial turf here, I basically glued a piece of that on top of this so that it kind of disappears from sight for the most part. All right. So let's talk about, so that, that's kind of the, uh, the, the main parts of the pool here. Um, not a whole lot more to discuss with inside the pool. 
uh, nothing you don't already know about. Um, let's see. We can uh, now move over to the equipment. And um, I had the equipment moved quite a, quite a distance at a higher elevation than the pool, which can cause some other challenges. This gate's getting replaced in a couple of weeks. It doesn't actually exist right now. <laughs> so if you look at your pool equipment, you're likely to see something resembling this setup. Yours will in, invariably be different, okay? There is all kinds of different things that could be happening in your pool. Now, this is a saltwater pool, uh, and this is a salinator. So that, that, that is a piece that you may or may not have, depending on kind of how modern your pool is. Some of these valves you may or may not have. These are automated valves. And um, you almost certainly, if you have a modern pool, you probably don't have a blower. And I'll explain why I have one uh, for my spa. But let's just talk about the different uh, parts here. The, the primary piece that every pool will have, and it will look very much like this, is the pump. So that is, that is your pool pump. That's where it is. And um, what that does is, is, you know, using some of this plumbing, it's pulling water right from that skimmer we pointed out into the pump, right? And then it pushes it out into the filter, and then it pulls it back out from the filter and pushes it back into the pool. That's really kind of what your pump does. That's um, the major function of the pump is to pull the water from the pool and push it through the filter and then uh, push it back into the pool. And um, this is a DE filter. This is a dichinaceous earth uh, filter. Uh, so it takes a uh, basically kind of a, a filter powder essentially with like little cartridges inside. Uh, that that uh, essentially filter the water that's coming into the pool. So th this is my favorite type of filter. There's all kinds of different filters out there. Um, this is my favorite one, but they're all very good. Uh, I mean, most modern filters are incredible. And they're relatively inexpensive devices, actually, considering, you know, the fact that they're doing most of the work of filtering you know, or all the work of filtering in your pool. Now, the filter itself doesn't really do any sort of... Um, chemical adjustments typically now there may be some filters that do this one uh, isn't necessarily doing much of that that of course the dietinaceous earth or earth uh, uh, substance does add, add to your chemistry but that isn't what's uh, regulating the chemistry of your pool so but let's focus on just components for now we have the pump we have the filter we have obviously all the plumbing there's valves as you can imagine you need to direct water one way or the other or from the pool or from the spa or um, from the skimmer or from the vacuum line which we didn't actually talk about um, so that's why you need valves is to redirect water in in certain ways and we'll talk about valves and how they work and why we need so many of them and then you have your heater now your heater might be a gas heater like this one or an electric heater or a solar heater or whatever it is that you have but you will probably have a heater hopefully uh depending on where you live now in southern california we almost never turn the heater on um for the pool but the heaters then they're mostly for the spa um now some people do turn their heaters on but that is a very costly thing to do with you know heating up um your, your typical pool is going to have like something like 15 to 20,000 gallons of water. And when you think about what it takes to heat that much water, just one degree, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of energy to do that. Now, typically the water temperature is at like 60. And if, you know, if you want your pool to be warm, you're going to pull it up to like 70 something. So you're heating 15,000 gallons of water or more. 10 plus degrees. That is a, a tremendous amount of energy that you're going to spend to do that. So that's why your monthly bill will be very high if you're continuously heating your pool. Uh, now, you, we might heat the pool once or twice a year if we have, you know, family over and the water is cold, we want the kids to swim. But we get enough swimming days without heating the pool that it, it never, never really becomes a thing. Um, I try never to heat the pool, uh, in fact. So that is, uh, but the heat, so the heater is essentially only being used for uh, the spa in our case. Now, I, I mentioned I have a blower and then you may not have one and I won't get into that discussion uh, of why I have one right now, but the blower essentially adds a, uh, uh, an air component to 
the uh, the spa jets that you have. So, you, you know, you'll get a more bubblier spa. Now, that's actually not a desired effect for me. Some people do like that. I don't like that. I'll just briefly get into it. Given the distance and the elevation changes, I need to turn the blower on for just about two or three seconds every time I turn the spa to make sure I kind of uh, uh, create enough pressure in the line uh, to to get the spa going properly uh, because I only have one pump. Now, if I had two pumps, that may be a little different, uh, but this was a way that we kind of engineered this, this setup and it worked really well for me. So before you criticize, know that this setup works phenomenally well for me. And then... You have your panel. Now, you may or may not even have a panel. Like, if you have an older pool, which we did before this, uh, all we had was the pump, uh, the um, filter, and the heater. We also had an additional pump, actually, for um, uh, for the spa. Uh, so we had a separate pump for the spa before. All this pool equipment was way closer to the pool before, which was super ugly and in sight. So we took it out of sight and that was kind of the price we had to pay to, um, to re-engineer everything. But anyway, if you have a panel like this, that means that all of this equipment no longer gets managed individually. It can get managed here at the panel. So if you didn't have a panel, you would have to come and uh, you're, you're, you have to program your pump itself to kind of come out at a certain hour and go off at a certain hour, or you would have like a manual switch to turn it on and off. And then these valves, they would be actual hard valves, kind of like this one, similar to that, and you would actually uh, close and open them. Now, the reason I still have to have some maintenance, uh, some valves, those are actually there for when we're maintaining the pool. If I wanted to shut off a certain area or open a certain area for maintenance. That's what I use, usually use those for. And then for your heater, you would have to actually come in here, open the panel and, you know, turn the heater on or off, uh, which as you can see, I can't even do with the panel because the panel has essentially taken over the, uh, the control of the equipment. So the panel controls the entire equipment. And um, this is a uh, Pentair, um, IntelliCenter control system panel. Um, I'm not going to give you many opinions on, <laughs> on uh, or reviews on these just yet, not in this video. I will cover those. Um, but I have seen a lot of these pool systems and in my opinion, none of them are super great. So this is uh, our pool. As you can see, there's a little green light there, meaning it's running. Uh, this is the spa. There's no green light there, meaning it's not running. Now, if I were to tap that button, some of these valves would change and the heater would come on and the spa would come on. So that's kind of how that works. We don't have any water features, but if you did, uh, well, actually we've got the air blower that's technically uh, in here set up as a water feature. But, uh, if we had any features, that would be it. And then here's how you turn the lights on and off. And we've got a few lights in the pool that actually didn't cover when we were there, but there's lights in your pool. <laughs> um, and uh, you can essentially turn them on and off here. But the beauty of all this is that um, this is all connected to a, a Wi-Fi module that's inside my garage. And there's an app that goes along with this setup so that I don't ever have to come out to this panel. I can do pretty much everything I, can, I want using the app, including changing some of the settings, turning things off and on, checking the chemistry. So our salt level right now is at 3,800 ppm. Um, no alerts or warnings. That's good. Our pull output's at 60%. Um, so we've got some, um, some good stats here shows you what my schedule is. I'm running the pump from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, now, whether or not that's a smart thing to do, we'll leave for another time. But right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm actually considering changing it. Electricity is pretty expensive during the day, but it's most expensive for us between 4 p.m. and like 9 p.m. It's a lot cheaper overnight, but um, I have to consider, you know, kind of... Um, a, a couple of things before I change that schedule. So anyway, this is the pool equipment um, in in general. And that's basically that, the anatomy of your pool. All of these lines are underground. Um, 
depending on code in your area, they may be like 18 to 24 inches or so underground or whatever it is. And uh, they're essentially running just underneath this walkway here. Uh, and they're, uh, they're moving out to, they're going to take a nice dip right about here, go way below these stairs. And then they take, uh, here is a point they all split essentially. Some go there, some go to the, the bottom drains and then some go over there. And, and, and uh, speaking of them, uh, you know, we've got, we've got two here and that's actually kind of the newer code. If you have a really old, old pool, you may just have one. Um, and the danger there is they don't, they, they can create a, um, a pretty heavy suction from the pump if you're near them. So if you had a small child that was near one of them, uh, and, uh, got near it, the pump could essentially suck that person close to it and it would be hard for them to let go. I find that honestly unlikely. It would have to be a, a very strong pump, very close to the pool with no other suction happening. And that would be the thing. And But that's possible. So that's why they have two now. So even if you were to plug up one, most of the suction happens from the other one. And that's uh, kind of how you relieve the, 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 the power from or the suction power from each one. And then uh, it'll be difficult to see it in this light. But there is one of our lights. It's a tiny little LED light. And let's see. We've got another one right there. And another one inside the spa. It doesn't provide a ton of light. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of these LED lights. I almost like I almost liked the uh the those really big marine looking ones that we used to use in older pools just because they gave off a lot more kind of diffuse light. Here's the other one. But these are cool, they're super tidy and they're nice and people like them. And what's really nice about them is they're like a multicolor light show. So you can kind of uh, set it up to give you um, lots of different kind of light colors and whatnot. Oh, and then one last thing that I didn't cover is over here, I've got a little flap, looks like a plastic flap, and that's, that's like a vacuum line. So we noticed that the, we talked about how the the water can get pulled in through that skimmer right there. Uh, well, at the equipment, there's a valve that can switch the suction to this line, and then you can connect the hose to it and uh, and have a, a little vacuum appliance or like an automated robot kind of attached to that to vacuum your pool. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for us. Those things don't climb, you know, stairs very well. Um, so it would keep that part of the pool clean, but not this part of the pool. And um, I have to see if I even have a problem with algae this summer or not uh, before I, uh, I consider it. So that's the basic anatomy of our pool. Uh, tell me how your pool is different and I might be able to give you some pointers, but uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't cover one major thing. <laughs> we were actually right here, so. This is, so that was the, the skimmer cover. This is our water fill line. As you can see, it's got one of these like um, bobs here, kind of like you would have in your old traditional toilets. Um, it's like a little siphon. If I push it down, water gets added to the pool. I let it go. Water is high enough now that it doesn't do that. So this is kind of going all day. It's just, very little amounts of water being added to the pool all day uh, in a very uh, fine and precise manner to make sure that your uh, water level stays uh, exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, and that's very important, by the way. So I'll tell you why it's so important to make sure your water level is correct at the water line. Now, see, it's still running. You can hear it. So th there's a couple of reasons. One is your your water line um, d determines uh, a, a few things. You can see here I've got a uh, I've got an area where the uh, the water kind of flows over the spa into the pool. It, it's a very fine line. In fact, you know there there's not a whole lot of water on top here. In fact, this is probably more than what we normally would have on top, honestly. Uh, we're, we're almost a little high because he just did, uh, 
just adjusted it the other day, um, but um, I prefer to be a little lower than this typically. Um, and, it, and it just barely skims over this line. But if your water line is too low, then this water doesn't get pulled into the skimmer from your spot. That's one thing. The second thing is if your water line gets too low, let's say you leave for a few days um, in the summertime, it's a little hot, the water evaporates and you're not adding water to it. Then the water line will get below, below the, the mouth of the skimmer and then your pump will start sucking in air. And if your pump sucks in air for more than just a few minutes, either it will shut down on its own or it will burn out uh, over time. So that is not something you want to do to your pump. And once that happens, that means your water doesn't get filtered anymore. And when your water doesn't get filtered, your pool will rot and it will look like a giant pile of mud. Um, and it will, algae will start growing on it and all kinds of stuff. And uh, we're actually not skimming all that great today. There's, there's some stuff on top of the pool. Um, and, I'll, and I'll cover a lot of that um, kind of maintenance in another video soon. So over the next few weeks, I'm gonna do videos on uh, some equipment, some cleaning equipment that, that every pool owner should have, regardless of whether or not you're having somebody clean your pool every week. There's a few things you should own. Um, and I'll go through the ones that I own um, that, that I really like, uh, products that have, that have served me pretty well. Um, how to test the water in your pool. Now, again, if you have somebody maintaining your pool, it's probably not very necessary, but there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, I like using strips and I know a lot of people use, uh, a, a, um, um, chemical kit. Uh, they're, they're both great ways. Uh, it's just the level of obsession you might have with, uh, with doing that and, and, and how easy you want to make it on yourself. I find if things are even slightly difficult, I'll probably do them less often. So um, the, key, the key to good pool maintenance is to make things kind of easy for yourself. Keep your equipment in a place where it's easy for you to get to them and, and uh, your, 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 you know, so, so it doesn't become a uh, pain for you to maintain your pool. The easier it is, the more you'll do it. Um, so we'll cover some of that. We'll cover how to keep like the chemical balance a little bit better. Uh, we'll cover kind of a couple of different types of pools over time. And then uh, I'll also give you some tips and tricks on how to clean uh, the surface of your pool and how to clean the bottom of your pool, how to get rid of like when the winds come through and, and your pool fills up with leaves, what you should do, uh, a lot of that. So, you know, uh, this isn't the typical type of video for this channel, but it is a DIY uh, channel. And this is a, a, a DIY set of um, uh, videos for maintaining a, a pool that you can enjoy uh, all year long, but especially during the summer, uh, which is kind of where we enjoy it the most. We, you know, in Southern California, we get a good seven or eight months of summer technically. So, so this pool gets used for a good seven or eight months. And, uh, during the winter months, we just don't use it hardly at all. We may use the spa a, a few times a month, but that would be it. All right, guys, click that subscribe button and uh, the notification bell if you're interested in uh, DIY projects, DIY tools, and also DIY pools now. Uh, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.